Hello everybody, my name is Aldous Huxley and today we're going to review a book called The Brave New World, which is a classical book. It's, it's a big old book from the 1930s or something like that, and it's it's massively famous. It's known for competing with something like 18, 19, uh, 1984, this one. It was, it was competing with this for a long time as the 20th century just went on, and so people were kind of wondering, you know, which is going to turn out to be the great old dystopia that's going to be big in the future world. Who, which one is it going to be? Is it going to be Brave New World or 1984? Who knows? But eventually, I think that 1984 went out and this one kind of faded off, so it's not that famous, but it is very, very famous. And of course, uh, I had to review it for English class, or at least read it. And so you can see, I do actually have notes on what I'm going to talk about and what the book is about, so I can actually give you a, a, a brainiac, craniac review today. Now, the most notable thing about this book is the concept. It is a dystopia, which means a future in which uh, it's not that great, you know, people think that in the future it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be wonderful, but it also has the chance of going completely in the other direction and being garbage. So this is one of those books that explores that concept. It talks about a society that's gone straight up into the future, so uh, one thing that you might want to mention is that you know, it was written in 1930, so they had no idea how it was actually going to turn out. And so the stuff that we have in the book is not even, some, in some cases, as technologically advanced as we have now in the 21st century. Anyway, the entire premise of the story is that Ford, you know, Ford, uh, what's his name? Tom Ford? Henry Ford, I believe. Yeah, Henry Ford, the guy who basically invented the car. Not really, but kind of. He invented the assembly line way of manufacturing, which is like the biggest thing in the world today. So he's kind of being worshipped. And at the time, you know, he's being worshipped as a god. And so, you know, this is a society where they worship things being made the same over and over again. Specifically people, as you've seen in the first chapter, people are made in that way. But I won't be going into any, any more spoilers. You'll see that in the first chapter. It's not spoiling anything, but it is pretty interesting because this is an entire concept based on such a small thing that sounds so plausible like this entire future you know the 21st century is entirely based off of one thing the computer and then eventually the internet this entire world that we're currently living in is based on one thing and in that same way this entire world which is about I don't know I think it's 700 years into the future of now is you know based on one thing which is Ford's assembly line which is bloody brilliant it's it's really really awesome because Ford is is, is a brilliant genius okay no matter what you think about him no matter what bad things he's done there's no denying he is a genius he created one of the most important things that will ever exist in the world and you need to give him credit for that and because of that you know this is, this is a genius topic the implications of this future is really really well expressed throughout the book like i i don't expect a sci-fi book to be so detailed and so proper with what it might become as this book, this is like a real pioneer in that regard because I've read a lot of sci-fi books, not a lot, but you know, I I've read my sci-fi share, you know? But the thing about those is that there's always a couple of things that are just like, that would be different. But of course the author can't do anything about it because if you remove that, it'd kind of break the entire book, it'd break the entire immersion of the setting because it seemed too different. The entire story would break, the plot would break, something would break. And so there always needs to be, you know, some kind of, change and some kind of negotiation with the plot so that we sacrifice something that would be realistic for something that makes the plot work. In this book, that doesn't really happen. It seems that everything here is so lightly fleshed out, like there's not that much of a difference, you know? There's a couple things here and there that are like very expressly obvious that this was this is a very big difference from what it was at the time. But when you really consider how deep it could have gotten, how much the world could have changed, now this is like very basic sci-fi and because of that, Aldous was able to actually push himself forward and like really express all of these ideas in a very timely manner without going too deep into one of them, without going too little in another. He really expressed all of them in a very even way that made the entire world seem very, very fleshed out despite it not being that far off from our own real world. The plot itself is obviously directly tied to the setting, which is that one person doesn't like the setting, and so there's a big old conflict as to what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, how does it influence the society, how does it influence them, and there's a whole big debacle about it, and it's, it's a very basic plot concept, but that doesn't mean that it's not very good. I really do think that it is a very, very strong, strongly written plot. Uh, despite not being the most original, I, I suppose it might be the most original at the time, but now it's not very original, it's a very saturated genre, and because of that, I, I don't feel comfortable rating it, you know, perfect in that regard, because it, to me, you know, it inspired all that, and, but at the same time, it didn't really, you know, deliver properly on the concept itself to our standards today, and I, I don't want to judge it based on 1920 standards, I want to base it on my standards today. Bro, the themes though, the themes are really, really powerful, they're... 
I really love the themes in this book because there's a lot of stuff about independence, about sin, about God, about stuff like that that are just, you know, we see them everywhere. We see them all the time and they're always really well done. And, you know, I really, I can really complain about a theme like this that is just so important in our modern world. And I, I very rarely see that type of a theme done badly, but this, this was done just as good as another book. Uh, and because of that, I don't want to rate it perfect on that regard. It didn't go too far in any real way. In, in some ways it did for the time, but for now it really didn't. And so because of that, I, I think it was good. The themes that were up, they were good. The themes of God, you know, uh, we always have to have something to put up as God. That's, that's a really interesting theme. And I really like how they you know, didn't really explore it as much as put it out there and kind of left little clues as to why that happened. And I, I really liked it. That was really fun. As well as the bunch of themes about, you know, stuff like monogamy. Uh, that stuff is why does it exist in our world? Why is in this world, Brave New World, why is it considered so bad? And all of those things that are just really, you know, they're not, they're not crazy, but they're done well. So I, I gotta give it to him. You know, Aldous, like, he did it well. The writing at times was hard to follow. I'm not a very visual person, as you'll know, and like every review that I'm going to give out soon, I'm not a very visual person, so I don't really imagine things, but from time to time I am able to imagine, you know, placement of certain people, what is in certain areas of the room, but I can't really imagine it vividly. In this situation, it was even hard for me to see where things were. It was very, very hard because the writing, although it was very strong, it wasn't very indicative of what it might look like. It felt like it was a very flat you know, picture, it, it wasn't very good in my opinion. It wasn't very deep, it didn't really make me feel anything as I read it. It was just a very strong piece of literature that made me think, that made me feel, uh, not not feel any real emotion or feel any, any tactile senses or anything like that, but it did make me feel like I, I have acquired something that I did not have before. And it's not a very, very deep thing of that, uh, because very few things can give you that. But this book gave me a sense of that. And that is relatively good considering, you know, it's a classic. It's got to be doing that. And so it obviously does that. But undeniably, uh, there's one thing that I need to talk about, which is the character. And it's not very well regarded. So the main character, apparently, uh, from what I've read, appears only halfway through the book. So I, I, well, this does happen, but I'm only just saying that, would you really consider this guy the main character? Or would you consider a different person the main character? Because based on how you read it, different people could be considered the main character. But you know, if you pick one person, then you have to think, no, this guy can't be the main character. So, you know, there's only one, maybe two main characters, but you know, it, it's really hard to think about it because it's a very weird setup for a main character anyway. Personally, I think that the, the person that shows up halfway through is the main character, and I think that that was done really well because there's a reason that it was done. You can tell, like, because it needs to be, the world needs to be introduced. We need to become accustomed to it. We need to become, you know, chill. We need to be happy with it, content. And then suddenly this guy comes up and we're like, oh, whoa, hold on. This is like this, this is like, whoa. And that is the use of putting the main character halfway through, which, and I do think that he is the main character as well. So that, that totally works out for me, but it does, feel really weird when the main character appears and it's like, oh, where have you been, huh? So I'm totally cool with that, but it feels off-putting is what I'm trying to say. So read that and just know that that happens or don't. Actually, maybe it would be better if you don't. I don't really know. Sorry, you're spoiled, but not really. I think that you should be able to, you know, enjoy it either way. It totally works out. Anyway, I want to give this book a uh, by Aldous Huxley, The Brave New World, a three out of five. Now, the reason I'm giving it three I, you know, it's a classic. You should be giving it five because there's so many important themes here. But the thing about it is that in, in a world where all these themes have been explored to death and it's so important, it doesn't really give me anything that I haven't already learned. You know, it gives me a better understanding, but it doesn't give me anything new. And because of that, I, I drop it from a four stars, which was my enjoyment in reading it because, you know, the writing was very dry, to a three stars because it didn't really feel like, well, it was a good book. And probably if I had read it back in that day, it would be a four, maybe even five out of five. But today, I would give it a three out of five. And, you know, I, I explained it. That was the entire video. So there's my review. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if that's all, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please click that like button down below and subscribe. Uh, at the same time, if you want to leave a comment, let me know if I did anything good, anything bad, whatever you want. Let me know. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.